Hey everyone, it's me again. I've been painting a new Blood Bowl team. This is a Pyrat from Punga Miniatures. It's an alternative Blood Bowl sculpt for Skaven. And if you notice, I'm putting it on a pirate ship base. And I've got a number of these bases printed out. Just like this. Now I've taken a piece of scrap MDF and I've put double-sided tape down and attached all the bases to the board to get them ready for painting. We're going to start with some Stinyl Res Black Primer through the airbrush. This is going to be a quick airbrush application and we're going to be using that for the first few coats of paint. Next we'll be applying some Stinyl Res White Primer as kind of a semi-pre-shaded, semi-zenithal shading sort of application and we'll build some light with that. Let's begin with the black primer. This is going to be an all over coat. Make sure you get the tops and the edges both. I'm going to hit the tops first and then go around the edges. Let's speed this up. Alright, one quick trick for getting things to dry out faster. If you don't have a heat tool, of course your airbrush pushing just air is an acceptable substitute and this will help dry it off. I'm using this to help accelerate the drying of the primer here. I'm going to load up some of that white primer and we're going to start adding some of the shading to the bases. Now the general idea with the shading here, it's a two-dimensional surface for the most part. So what we're going to do is we're going to go for a center glow and this glow as an undertone will help us direct the light towards the center of the base. This should help direct the eye to the mini and keep it in focus. Definitely take your time with this. The white primer will dull out as it dries and build it up slowly. Once the white primer is nice and dry and has had a little bit of time to cure, we're gonna go ahead and bust out some of our ink tense wood from scale 75 and put that directly in the airbrush, just like that. Now, once you've got it loaded up, we're gonna slowly tint each one of these bases. So I'm holding the airbrush quite a bit back from the actual bases here. So I'm taking it very slow, very easy. It also allows the ink to dry. Ink tends to take a little bit of time to dry. And I will take a couple of passes. So I'm gonna do one initial pass where I get the most of the color in, and then we'll touch them up before we finish with the intensity work. The important thing that we're looking for here is to get this nice brown orange tone and that's going to play well with the color that we're going to use in another step. For the next part, I'm going to get out a big brush and we're going to apply a healthy amount of Agrax Earthshade here. Now I'm mixing this down with just a slight bit of 
flow improver and you can do the same that will help reduce any sort of like coffee staining lines etc when it goes to dry now since I've mixed this down by about one part to one part with my flow improver this isn't going to be a very deep shade and it's going to flow pretty smoothly over the bases the important things to note here is that we want to tint the bases just a little brown we also want to get some of that agrax or shade in between the planks and if there is a little bit of coffee staining doing a little bit of stippling here can actually add some texture to our wood all right, we're gonna get out some more ink here. We're gonna get out Scale 75's Intensity Green and a little bit of Citadel Lamian Medium. We're gonna mix this one to one to one with some Flow Improver, and we're gonna make a very, very thin wash. This is gonna be barely tinted green. So once we've got it ready, we're gonna apply a liberal amount of the green, and then we're gonna stipple some drier spots in near the end. Really push this around until you get kind of a tint that you like. This is kind of emulating some of the, you know, biological material that accumulates on ships like moss and algae and things like that. And it definitely gets in to all of those planks. So this is just a slight tint of green, and this will work well with that kind of slightly orange brown that we have from our previous steps. If it gets a little too thick, a little bit too green, add just a little bit of water. You might be able to reactivate it and kind of push it around and thin it out. So just play around with this step. You're definitely wanting to start adding texture here. This will make the bases look unique. All of these bases are clones of each other, um, but you'll notice that the texturing and the slight differences in color actually give them a little bit of character. So it doesn't hurt to be inconsistent. step we're gonna add some typhus corrosion to give it a little bit more character a little bit more weathering and this is gonna be a really really light application here I kind of dip my stippling brush into a bit of water and dab it out on a towel before picking up some typhus corrosion and I kind of unload a bit of it on uh, on a piece of paper here next to me you can see what I'm doing there right on my desk and then I'm gonna kind of stipple it all around now it's gonna dry kind of like a dark solid brown um, it will mute down just a little bit, kind of just get it in there. And there is a little bit of texture in this, so make sure you clean your brushes really well after using Typhus Corrosion. One last step we're gonna take a little bit of matte black and go around the edges of the base now you should have a nice vignetted base that you can mount your miniatures on you should be ready to play some blood bowl there's one of my rats ready to go and I'm excited to get this team finished up so thanks for joining me having a great time with this project I've got more rats to come so check me out on social media make sure you follow me there and I'll have more videos and streams coming up Later.